Williams. I am Dr. Avis Williams, the proud superintendent of NOLA Public Schools, and I could not be more proud than I am right now because I have some amazing scholars and special guests for our first episode of Voices of Future Leaders. So before we dive into the amazing topic that we're going to share with you all today, I want to make sure that we have introductions. So we'll start over here. If you could just tell us who you are and uh, your role here at Cohen High School. Well, hi y'all. My name is Kiara and my role at COIN is I'm a 12th grader, soon about to graduate, and um, I play volleyball team captain. And I'm just a, I'm the MC also, so I host things Ooh. and I help like, you know, just, and I'm a student ambassador. So, so you stay really busy. Yeah. Thank you for making the time to be here today. Yeah. yeah. And I know you don't need an introduction, but if you could introduce yourself anyway. I am Vic Frieda, uh, better known as the Queen of Bounce, and I am an alumni of Walter L. Coyne. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Adario. I am an office intern. I'm a student ambassador, and I'm, I'm one of these. And what grade, Illyria? 12th grade. 12th grade, 12th grade senior. Okay. Hey, I'm Allie. I'm a um, I play volleyball and I'm going to be the future um, trainer. I love it. Oh my goodness. That's awesome. So it's so awesome, right? And so I'm, I'm really honored and privileged to be here with all of you today. And, and so the purpose of our podcast is really to lift up student voice. And I appreciate you being here, especially as, oh, no a, 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 as a, a citizen and, and home here in New Orleans, as well as a graduate alumni of yeah. Walter Air Cohen High School. Um, and when we think about what that means in terms of connecting our scholars to the community, through social justice. Um, you know, when I think about lifting student voice, one of the things that I wonder about is how you all view yourselves here in New Orleans, and especially through the lens of social justice. Um, you know, we can use that term and it may mean different things to different people. So why don't we just, just take a brief moment, let's talk about that. What does social justice mean to you? Um, I feel like social justice means um, stopping gun violence, crime, mm -hmm paying attention to the small things in schools, mm -hmm. and neighborhoods, like you know, just just the small things that help the community instead of breaking. Yeah, I love that. Yes, I wanna add on to that. I feel like social injustice means like more opportunities. Mm -hmm. Like more what type of opportunities do you think of, Illyria? Well mm. opportunities. Oh, yeah. I definitely agree. I think social justice just means like equality. Mm -hmm. Like everybody should be able to get the same opportunity. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It is definitely about equal opportunities for everybody in the mm -hmm. community. You know, and that no, no matter what the race mm -hmm. is, no matter where you live, no matter what bracket you fall in for as wealth and financial, you know, stability, we need social justice you know, just for our community as a whole. And we have a lot of issues that New Orleans, especially we fight on a daily basis yeah. about social justices. You know, um, a lot of times, you know, we don't know if if different things that we're going through, mm -hmm. you know, if we're treated fairly or, right. or if we're treated equally. And yep. it's, it's about treating people fair and equally with everything that goes on in, in New Orleans. Yeah, and, uh, and Elyria, you mentioned as an issue um, looking at the wealth gap, and that's one of the issues that's really important to me because, mm -hmm. you know, as an educator, we talk a lot about achievement gaps, but I, I would argue that until we address the wealth gap, we've got a lot, of tr a lot of problems that we still need to overcome. So what are some issues that matter to you guys as it relates to social justice in our community? Um, I can start. Um, I think Back to the equality part, like, I feel like, let's get into the LGBTQ community. Mm -hmm. Like, not a lot of people accept it. And I think it's okay if you don't accept it, but a lot of kids can't, like, embrace themselves mm -hmm. and be who they want to be, like, in school because yep. they get bullied. Yeah, one of the things I like to say is that, that as young people, you should be able to bring your whole selves into the classroom and into the learning spaces. And be accepted whether it's your parents or just a regular individual mm -hmm. in general. Because I think it starts from your household, your mm -hmm. parents. So most parents accept it, and most parents don't accept it. And that's where the bullying starts to come from home. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, you know, being that, you know, I'm a part of the LGBTQ community, 
Um, support is very important. When I was young, I had support from my mom and my family, mm -hmm. and that was very important, I think, because I already had to go out and fight at school and mm -hmm. fight with the world, so it does start at home. And um, I can say one thing, though, that just looking back over time from when I was a kid and when I started at COIN, I don't know how things have changed with you all for as, like, you know, just gay kids around the school, but when I was growing up, you know, it was people calling names and bullying and picked on. And I'm certain that y'all may still deal with those issues, but just looking back over time from when I was a kid, things have grew in New Orleans in general for acceptance, mm -hmm. you know. It was not accepted when I was really growing up, you know, it was really hush-hush. Mm -hmm. So now that we have developed all of these, you know, allies and communities around to help support the LGBTQ community, I think that things have definitely grown from when I was growing up to currently now. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. You know, we still have a lot of issues yeah, to most overcome. Definitely. Um, because like I said, I think about belonging. You know, we think a lot about DEI, you know, diversity, equity, and inclusion, but belonging is a part of that too, making sure that our, our scholars feel a sense of belonging at school um, and that we're breaking barriers. So what are some of the barriers to the issues that you may uh, find that you're passionate about? What are the issues, first of all? What, what, are, what were you, would you say some of your issues are, Lyria, that I you wanted, really care a lot about? I wanted to agree on it starting at home. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like the parents should let their kids know that it's okay to be different. Like, mm -hmm. you're, you're not going to always see people that are like you. Yeah. It's okay to, you know, not judge me. Like, yeah. You're starting you young. Know. Starting at home and starting young. Yeah. Yeah, I de definitely can agree with that. So when we think about social justice and equity, is it important? Yes, most definitely. definitely. Why? Social justice, social justice and equality, I mean, is important because, like you said, treating everybody mm -hmm. fairly, that equal opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I fight for it all the time. I'm always trying to break barriers and open doors and, and try to do things for the community that people that may think they don't have a voice, yeah. there is somebody out there fighting for your rights and fighting for your voice. I mean, voting is one thing that is very important. Yes. That's how we get to fight for social justice and equality as well. That's right, that's you know? right, yep. What do you guys think about social justice and equity and why it's important? Everybody should have the same rights. Yeah. Everybody should be equal and treated equal. Mm -hmm. Because you never know what somebody wants to what they have going on. Yeah. Heavy on the treated equally because most people most people don't know what people go through in a mental state. Most people mm -hmm. most people have built up anger in them so mm -hmm. they take that and they put it on other people mm -hmm. or they just would come to school and not feel it good when they they come they would come to school and look bad. Yeah. yeah. But um, most people judge. Yeah. And that's not good. That's not that's not People are not supposed to be treated off of the way they look. They Absolutely. Know what they have going on during the day. And I'm glad you mentioned the mental state. We're going to take a short break. And when we come back, I really want to dig into mental health and the, the I guess, the intersection between social justice and mental health. So we'll talk about that when we come back. Hi, I'm Dr. Avis Williams, the proud superintendent of NOLA Public Schools. And I'm Big Freedom of the Queen Diva. Did you know that chronically absent students not only miss some crucial information at school, including the fun and social activities, but they're also way more likely to fall behind. And it is important to attend today and achieve tomorrow. You already know. Hey y'all, this is Big Freedom of the Queen Diva, and when I get stressed, I mean, I'm always traveling all over the world, checking in different hotels, on different airplanes, and what I need to step back and take a moment, I take my minute. I put on me a gospel song, I go to God in prayer, and just take a minute and talk to God, and that helps relieve a lot of my stress. So whenever you need your minute, take your minute, and don't be ashamed of it. We're back 
And as promised, we are going to talk about mental health um, as it relates to social justice and equity. But before we go there, we, we touched on uh, voting and the power of the vote right before we took the break. And I want to celebrate that our scholars here will all be turning 18 within the next year. Yes. And as future leaders, you're going to what? Vote. Thank you. Y'all have to get out and vote. It yeah. is very important. That is the way that we change things in our community and change things in the world in general. Yeah. When you get out there and vote, your voice does matter. Mm -hmm. I mean, especially when it's, you know, a lot of us voting. A lot of times we sit at home, it's just our grandmothers and our mothers voting, and the younger generation have to really get out there and go and vote. Once you make 18, let your voice be heard. And it matters. It matters. You know, your vote does count. Every so. vote counts. Yeah, and I'm excited about you all being future leaders and future voters. Um, and, and with that said, you know, we want to talk about the school district and whether you all have what you need, get what you need. And when I think about this, I can't help but think about mental health and wellness. And, and we know that, that schools have school counselors. A lot of our schools have social workers. And uh, we have a new program called Thrive Kids that provides school-based mental health. Uh, but, but talk to us about what you're getting from your school and what you need from your school and, and it can be about mental health or if there's some other pieces that you want to really lean in on then we certainly want to hear about that also I think right now in schools it's more of our voices not being heard mm -hmm. like we in class we doing what we're supposed to be doing we maintain the grades we keep the GPA but it's like we don't have mm -hmm. our voices not heard we want certain things they have a lot of seniors going to schools they got some seniors at certain schools getting certain senior trips and they have other seniors at other schools getting the minimum because of our voice not being heard. Mm -hmm. Do you look at it as an equity issue? Like we've got things that are available but not necessarily available for everyone? Yes. Okay. Like I, I look at it as if everybody else get a chance to do these things, why can't we? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. I definitely agree. And um, I think it's all about building a safe space. Um, mm -hmm. My school doesn't do the best job, like we do a good job, but you know, it's not the best job like creating a safe place. Like I don't feel like I could really sit down with somebody and be able to like tell them how I feel. So mm -hmm. that's pretty big. Because you gotta you gotta make me feel comfortable in order to open up. It's no, not that's a huge. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like academically wise we're good, but like mentally wise, they don't talk to us. Yeah. It's a lot of trust. Nobody trusts nobody. There's no trust. Is there any teachers that y'all can go to? Any counselors? Yeah, any... it's a good thing. Yeah, they have, like, I don't know. All I'm taking my fingers. Just those students. Like, mm -hmm. that I could talk to. And just open up about what's me. Not everything. Because they already have a relationship or that you would trust to open up with? What do you think? For me, I think it's because they was with me for the beginning of my high school year to mm -hmm. now, and they have this one particular teacher who was with me since when I was a baby. So my trust law is like... And that, that is because of the relationship in that, that case, huh? Really yeah. the relationship, but then they have another teacher that I just built a relationship with either last year or a year ago, like two years ago. Mm -hmm. And our relationship is more of a, I rather talk to him than a, a regular counselor. Gotcha. Because he's not, he not talking to me about why I feel this way or um, you know, just trying to get in my business. It's more of a, okay, since you feel like this and you feel like this hurting you, use that as motivation to mm -hmm. get you what you need to do. Like giving you strategies yes. to help. Yeah, so, so speaking of strategies, what are some things that schools and families can do to advance equity and really to just support you all in your journey for whatever you do beyond high school? Because you know, you, you guys are finishing up this year. And with that being said, we need you prepared to truly be the leaders and to take on the world. So what are things schools and family can do to support that? I feel like it's that with support and we need like programs. Say more mental, about that. Mental health programs, like for students that they're not they really don't know how to express their feelings, but if mm -hmm. somebody is willing to talk to them and you know let them know that they're here for them, mm -hmm. they're going to talk. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the teachers, they need to have a sit down with somebody higher above them too to let them know what we need, mm -hmm. what we're requesting for. Mm -hmm. so they can understand. And a person that's higher needs to actually listen instead of using their, what's the word, professionalism or like 
just their status mm -hmm. and be like, well, no, we can't provide that, we can't do that for you mm -hmm. because of this, that, and the third. Is that, is that person that's higher maybe me? <laughs> <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe. Because <laughs> I am listening, and this is really good intel for me in terms of some, some things that we can do to make sure that you all have what you need to be successful. What are you going to say? And I also think it's really about the response. Like, mm -hmm. a lot of kids, they don't want to keep hearing, like, it's going to be okay. Like, yeah. You know, like, yeah, it's going to be okay, but not at the moment right mm -hmm. now. Like, that's not what they want to hear. Like, every time I go to somebody, they tell me the same thing. Like, are you really listening to me? Listening to me? Yeah. Like, are you hearing me? Are yeah. you hearing my feelings? Are you hearing that I'm hurt? Mm -hmm. I think one thing also that may be good is like a suggestion box. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like around the school or in different classes, maybe what the kids mm -hmm. want to say or mm -hmm. they maybe can't say it. They can maybe leave a suggestion mm -hmm. anonymous without their name on it. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe we just look at that as a way of, you know, being able to hear their voices yeah. and somebody checking out what they're saying. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and without it being a thing where they're afraid of, of, of someone knowing it was them, something yeah. where they can do anonymously, but also right. put their name so that someone can actually come to them, maybe have it where it's both. Yeah. yeah. But most teachers, they, like, I think they have this thing where whenever we do work, they have boxes on the end of the paper, and it's like, oh, how well did this go? What do you think we need to grow? Almost like a little survey at the end? Yeah, yeah okay. but it's like two boxes. And it's mm -hmm. like, how well did this go? Do you think we need to grow in this? We should grow, we should grow. Like, that's, mm -hmm. that's big here. Yeah. Like grow in your glow. Yeah. But yeah. It's, it's for the whole class or it's for the teacher personally. Okay. It should but be. not necessarily turned around in, in terms of, of changing something that may have happened or? It's like, no, uh, it's for the teacher personally. Like, gotcha. What can they improve? I got what you. Okay. What can they improve for okay. the class? What can they improve on their teaching? It's not based off of us. Okay, so let, so let me think about this then in terms of it being something that is based off of you all because you guys are, are the future leaders, right? Yeah. So what does that mean in terms of what you all can do? Um, because I, I absolutely agree with you that you need to be heard and you need to be empowered. Um, but like in this moment, um, you know, we see young uh, people just like you all being entrepreneurs and creating um, all sorts of change in the world. Um, and maybe you're, you guys are doing that now too, but what are some things that you can do to advance equity um, at your school and in the world? Yeah, yeah that's the main thing. Really Okay. I think that's what I do. I think that's what we all do today. Can I just go? Speak, please do. I think yeah. me personally, I feel like I do a lot of things so people could see it and be like, oh, if she's doing it and it look fun, like, because that, like, based on today's generation, they're not going to do it because it's not fun. If it look boring, they're going to be like, oh, I'm not doing it because it's not boring. Nobody else not doing it. And now in days, they like trend. So it's like, if they see me doing it and they see that I like it and I'm enjoying it and I'm having fun, they're gonna be like, Oh, she had fun, she laughing, she So laughing. you're a role model. Yeah. I yeah. Like, I love yeah. that. You're a role model. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and you know, and that's good because I do think that there's a space to where what you can do proactively is be a positive role model for your peers. And and I don't know if you guys have younger siblings or cousins or people in the neighborhood, but young kids look up to seniors in high school. I mean, they're just like, oh my God, she's a senior, she plays volleyball, or whatever the case may be. And that's a, that's a really, really key position to be in. And when we go to like the student ambassador trip, that's all you hear that you're talking about. What, what type of activities do yeah. you have at your school? And we have to really tell them, like, you have to really be excited to get them to come in. Because if you if you just gonna go to school and think that, oh, yeah, I'm not I'm not going to that school because yeah. they're not really high they, they school boring. <laughs> Girl, they don't come to Coin. <laughs> <laughs> the, the best of the best. Yeah. I love that. And and as a Coin grad, how does that make you feel? The best of the best. Oh, I mean. <laughs> In my days, we had a great time here at school. It was we, you know, it was just a lot of things that we did. Um, we were very involved, you know, with with the school. I mean, I was involved in sports. I was first of all, I was a cheerleader. I was the uh, director of the choir. Nice. I was on um, in. Uh, ROTC. I had all the different things that I was involved in that kept me busy. 
you know, and um, I think it's important for us to do a lot of the different, these old things that we used to do back yeah. then, you know, to keep these children active. Absolutely. You know, wood making, choir, you know, putting prayer back into school, all of these mm -hmm. things are, in, you know, important. Mm -hmm. Wait, yeah. So what was your graduate grade? 96. <laughs> yeah, a long time ago. And we, when I graduated, we kept going to the state championship with the basketball team. I love team. it. They you actually know. have us named as the Diamond Clan. I'm so excited. Yes. I'm so excited. Yeah, you know, and there's a sense of pride um, about being an alumnus of your, your high school and beyond. Yeah. And, and I know you guys, uh, when I tell you, when I'm, I'm looking at our legacy schools here, Walter L. Cohen is one of the top in terms of alumni pride. Yeah, most definitely. What did you think when you came Oh, I mean, <clears throat> the new building, I'm loving it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it gives you guys a lot to be proud of, and I'm a big believer that learning environment matters, um, and that you guys need to have the best, most innovative learning spaces possible. Um, and so we're going to begin wrapping up here, but I want I want us to to really close by thinking about um, activist causes that you truly believe in, and what would be your call to action. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm saying a few additional words because this is me giving you think time, okay? So be thinking about what is your call to action? Like if you were um, speaking to the leaders of our entire community, not just the school, but your entire community, um, in, in just a few sentences, what message would you send to them that really encompasses what you need as a young person to be successful around social justice, equity, or whatever issues you might have? What is your call to action? I would say everybody needs a village. Mm -hmm. The village and support. Yeah. I love that. You know, I was at a, a meeting the other day and we were talking about the village and it was like the school is not the village, it's part of the village. Mm -hmm. And every every child, every family needs that village. I love that. It's like a a neighborhood, like never been like a part of this is like one of the houses we got another thing that's like another house but it's like in a community yeah yeah a sense of community yeah, yeah. i love that i mean probably the biggest thing is like a voice like we all need a voice mm -hmm. we have to kind of develop it we need a community we need a voice yeah and yeah. security if that makes sense say more like we need more what's the word we need more like people that's going to take up us. Mm -hmm. Advocacy. 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 I love mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Because, you know, one thing that I always say that we've, we've got challenges just like any urban city and they are not your problems to solve, um, but you absolutely deserve a seat at the table and to be a part of the conversation. And the advocacy piece is extremely important. Um, what would you say your call to action would be? I mean, definitely um, security and a safe haven for mm -hmm. the, the, the kids at the school. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, also a support system where they can feel support and love. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a lot of things that still needs to be changed, as I can see, as mm -hmm. listening to their voices. Um, you know, this is the reason that we're going to have these conversations yes. constantly and over and over to see what the issues mm -hmm. are and attack those issues one at a time. I think it's important for the leaders of the community to have, you know, different rallies and pep rallies mm -hmm. to give these children motivation, you know, talent shows, all the different things that kept us, you know, engaged. active. Yeah, positively engaged. engaged. Yeah, positively yeah. engaged. I think there's more things that need to happen in the community as a whole, mm -hmm. more opportunities to create jobs for them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because if you're, if you're learning all of these skills about making money and hustling, yeah. you know, when we were young, we had different things that we did at school, like selling candy. Mm -hmm. You get the, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. highest person selling the candy. Right. Get, you know, you get prizes and stuff. But nowadays you cannot do that. Yeah. They don't live. <laughs> yeah. 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 But see, we weren't happy about doing these, these yeah. things. Now it's, times have just changed. Yeah. Like now it's just, you take a piece of candy, you don't even know if you're going to live to get home. Oh, goodness. Look. Yeah. Okay, so as we wrap up, so first of all, thank you thank each and every one of you for your contribution. Do y'all realize 
that we are like the inaugural episode of Future Leaders, the voices of future leaders. And so that's a big deal, and I really appreciate that. And for our listeners out there, you know, please check out NOLA Public Schools on all of our socials, nolapublicschools.com, um, and, and be, be informed of the things that we're doing to change the pathway for our future leaders and to ensure that our scholars have all that they need in order to be successful. And as my call to action, I want to encourage all of our citizens and especially the leaders within our community to be vigilant about our young people. Um, and, to, and when we say that we're here for our young people to mean it. And I'll end by simply saying that I see you, I hear you, and I love you. And we appreciate you. Thank you all so much for being a part of Voices of Future Leaders. See you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to Voices of Future Leaders. You know, as superintendent, one of the most important aspects of my job is making sure that I'm listening to our scholars and being responsive. I am so grateful to our scholars from Walter L. Cohen High School and what they shared with us this evening. I also want you to know some of the resources that NOLA Public Schools has available. We are so grateful to have the $10 million investment with Thrive Kids, which allows us to have school-based mental health services and supports at our schools. It also connects with our families. And in the future, please look to learn more about NOLA PS Cares. CARES is our community access to resources and equity, and we'll prioritize literacy, mental health, workforce development, and social justice. We are super excited to be able to provide a variety of resources for our scholars, our family, and the entire community. And you'll be able to see this come to life in our new strategic plan, NOLA PS Evolve. It's a strategic plan of action, and I look forward to launching that later this fall. So stay tuned for many more Voices of Future Leaders.